Namaste, Namaste everyone. We are in the last moment of that array optics, last part of the array optics, telescopes and microscopes. Already in the previous class we have studied the, um, the ray diagrams of the telescopes and microscopes and one magnification we have found out. Now today we will uh, uh, put a light on all the uh, derivations. Of course, if it is difficult for on your part, just study the final formula that is more important and the ray diagram is important, but try to follow the derivation because uh, you will have to have some uh, 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 already some uh, uh, that definitions and uh, uh, the uh, terms regarding magnification. So we, I will uh, put those definitions in between, okay. So first of all we will uh, with the ray diagram we will try to derive the derivation. And you know that uh, there is a simple microscope. What is a simple microscope? Simple microscope is uh, a simple lens, convex lens, in which object is kept within the focus and the image is magnified on the same side, enlarged, erect, virtual. That is a simple microscope. So if you draw the ray diagram for a simple microscope, it will be like this. Suppose this is the first focus and if this is the another focus, of course, the 2F and this is F and this is 2F and if you keep an object within the focus then two rays of light you have to consider one from A from the same point you have to consider two rays and it passes through the focus and another ray passing through the optic center that is the geometric center of the lens and uh, it uh, okay to right it, is, it should be geometrically it should be proper since we are not using any scale or so, only uh, we are uh, drawing the prob uh, diagram with our own uh, measurements. Okay, so here should be an object. I'll take a small object because I know that I am going to get an enlarged image. So parallel ray passes through the focus. Another ray passing through the optic center, they diverge. And a person observing from here, he feels that these two rays are coming from a distant object here somewhere here or distant uh, point here right somewhat like this so the two rays appear to diverge or appear to come from a point here so like this this will be the enlarged virtual image so since these two rays one this one another this one arrow marks very important diagram is also important these two rays start from the point A of the object, so that is why this is A dash, the portion of the image. Similarly, all the rays starting from different points of this uh, source will meet at different points here. We can retrace it uh, by geometry itself. You need not draw every ray diagram from every point of the object. Just uh, once you get the image of this here, we are very sure that other images will be here. So the whole image will be here. So A dash, B dash is the virtual enlarged direct image formed on the same side as the object. This is the case of the simple microscope. So you have to use the lens and you have to move the lens in such a way that object lies within the focus. Okay, so what is the magnification involved here? If you want to know the magnification, we know that uh, M is equal to uh, H dash by H that is equal to V by U. What is H dash? That comes to be H dash is equal to um, H V by U, right? Or, uh, okay, H V by U. And you know that uh, here, if you want to know the magnification, you can substitute for U because you know the lens formula. 1 by F is equal to 1 by V minus 1 by U. Let us substitute for 1 by U. 1 by u is, uh, uh, it can be taken here and 1 by f here, you, we have, we did this in the previous uh, uh, class, 1 by u is equal to 1 by v minus 1 by f. So let us substitute it here. Uh, so that comes to uh, h dash is equal to h into v by u, y h by u or we will write the equation for magnification only it is uh, h v by u okay h v by u that is equal to h into v into by u can be substituted as 1 by v minus 1 by f right so 
if you bring v into the uh, bracket inside the bracket what you will get that comes to uh, so h dash is equal to h into 1 by v into 1 by v 1 minus v into 1 by f v by f right of course i could have taken uh, h da h here only so i will keep h dash by h itself that itself is a magnification i need not have uh, done that i could have substituted 1 by u here only so let it be h dash by h is equal to 1 minus v by f right but where is v we have to adjust the lens in such a way that image is formed at the least distance of distinct vision at least so the minimum possible distance at which you can see the image clearly that is almost 25 centimeter for a, a normal human being so where is the image now image is formed at the distance of least distance of distinct vision so what is this then v is a minus d because it is coming on the left hand side so what happens to the magnification i'll write it here h dash by h which is nothing but magnification magnification is given by 1 minus minus d by f or m is equal to 1 plus d by f so 1 plus near point that is the least distance of distinct vision divided by focal length of the lens that is the magnification in the case of a simple microscope when the image is at uh, d that means when the image is formed at least distance of distinct vision suppose this object is very close to the focus what happens then these rays become parallel and parallel and parallel if the object is exactly at the focus these become uh, these two rays will be exactly parallel and they never meet suppose it is very close to the focus these rays will meet at a very large distance you will get a highly magnified image and uh, so if the image is at infinity so for this is uh, when the image is at d this is the derivation for when the image is at d magnification of a microscope simple microscope right when the image is at d and uh, so this is the formula so you could have writ uh, written h dash by h h dash by h itself you can write it like that way only so you can uh, bring this here only you need not take h to that, that side then you can remove this h h so the big becomes uh, h dash by h 1 plus d by f very simple derivation now if the image is at infinity that means a very large distance when the object is very close to the focus what is the magnification in that case can you apply the same magnification because image is not at the least distance of distinct vision it is formed at very large distance what is the uh, ray diagram for the formation of image at infinity that means you have to keep the object at focus focus yes one ray coming from uh, a parallel to the principal axis passes through the focus and another ray passing through the optic center becomes parallel parallel to the first ray right so it becomes parallel here so let me change the focus yeah it is here and they will be moving parallel what about here again parallel even if you produce it backwards or forward they become parallel so we've said that the image is formed at infinity so one ray here passing like this one ray here now how to find out the magnification here whenever the ma uh, image is at a very large distance um, we use a different type of formula for the magnification for example in especially telescope for example when you look into moon by using your naked eye what the image is formed inside the retina and when you look through the telescope what the image is formed there is a difference when you look through the telescope you can see the points different points on the moon separately very clearly you can see the craters you can see the hills ups and downs everything but when you look into the moon uh, from uh, bare eyes you won't be able to identify all these differences but through the telescope image becomes clear so how much larger is the image when uh, seen through the telescope compared to when you look into the moon bare, with bare eyes that is compared and that is written as magnification you can't write uh, magnification when the image is at a very large distance as size of the image by size of the object so does telescope and uh, produce a magnification definitely uh, it is the magnification as compared to uh, when you see it uh, using bare eyes so you can see the better image through the telescope that is what we do so in that case definition goes little different how it is done the angular uh, position or angular position of the or angular size of the object and angular size of the image when they are compared 
which is larger. What do you mean by angular size? Angular size means suppose you are looking into two stars uh, on the sky. The light coming from the two stars will subtend an angle at your eyes, right? That is angular position. Suppose you look into a star like this, then uh, they will create an uh, uh, angle in your eyes. So that is the angular position. Suppose if you are looking, suppose there is a hill and you are looking towards a tower from a very distant place from here, then what is the angular position of this tower? It is like this. And if you come closer and closer, that angular position goes on increasing. And when you come very close to the tower, you can't see the tower at once. Because the vision angle or the, um, that uh, area which it covers will not be enough. So, because you have to receive these two rays through your eyes, that is not possible. So, the angular position goes on increasing as you go closer and closer to the object. Now, how much angle the object will sub subtend when it is look, uh, when it is seen through the bare eyes? Now, I am defining it for microscope. I will write the heading here. This is microscope, simple microscope itself. So, magnification for simple microscope, but image at infinity. This case, when the image is at infinity, look into the object at the least distance of distinct vision. How much angle it will create in your eyes? Look into the image which is formed at a very large distance. How much angle it will create? That ratio, angle subtended at the eye by the image to the angle subtended by the object, when the object is at least, uh, least distance of distinct vision. And that ratio of angles is called magnification. So you have to go for a different one. So how to calculate this sir? First take the object. Yeah, and you know that the image of the object is not so clear. You have to look through the telescope, sorry, microscope. Then only you will get the enlarged image. Now you take the object. For the object, I will take the object. Keep the object in front of your eyes. No microscope, no telescope now. You are not looking through any device. You are looking into the object directly. Now, let if suppose your eye is somewhere here, okay, and uh, how much angle the two rays coming from the two ends of the object will create. This is the angle created at the eye by the object. Of course, this angle will be very small because microscope is always used to view an object which is very small, right, which cannot be distinguished or which cannot be seen clearly through your ordinary eyes without any instrument. So such objects will be viewed through microscopes. So this angle will be very small. So if you take sine theta and tan theta, it is almost equal to theta. Okay, so this is the height of the object, right? H and H dash is always used for height of the image. This is H and what is this distance? Let us keep it at least distance of distinct vision. This is not the image. Remember, we are here we are getting the image at the least distance of distinct vision. Now we are holding the object itself. Object itself is kept at least distance of distinct vision, right? Now, write tan theta, tan theta. So just hold the object in front of you at least distance of distinct vision, which is almost equal to theta naught. What is the ratio of this? Opposite side by adjacent side, h by d. Am I right? This is the formula. So this is uh, viewed uh, simply in front of your eyes. You have not at started observing the object through the microscope. So uh, sign conventions don't hold good here. Simply you are holding your object without any in instrument and only eye lens is in uh, the picture now. Eye lens is a common thing and without eye lens you can't see any object. So no sign conventions have to be placed. Simply you are looking at an object. So H by D, that's all. Left side, right side doesn't uh, have any meaning here. Theta naught is H by D. Now one part portion we have got. What is theta i? What is theta i? See, image is formed. These rays are coming from a very distant object or here. So they are at a very far away point. And let me see. Just imagine that it is a very large image, uh, far away and very far away. And I call this as the image distance v. Because if you just keep this object little within focus, what happens is these rays diverge and they meet at a very large position. So shall I call this as the uh, uh, angle f subtended at the eye by the image. Actually, these rays are coming to the eyes, right? These rays are coming to your eyes. And they produce the virtual image, erect image, somewhere else, at a very large distance. That means how much angle they will create with respect to the principal axis. So shall I call it as theta i, angle created by the image. And if this is theta i, definitely this is theta i because uh, these two are uh, vertically opposite angles. And if this is theta i, what is tan theta i? 
tan theta of the image position or size is equal to opposite side that is height of the image divided by height uh, this is sorry opposite side by adjacent side it is v tan theta is h dash by v and v is in this side is it minus v correct because image is on the same side as object it is opposite to the rays of light coming you have to measure it so minus v now this is almost equal to theta i since theta i is very small theta i is a small what i can write theta i is almost equal to h dash by minus v now you have to substitute for h dash you know that magnification in your lens h dash by h is equal to v by u what does it mean that is equal to or that implies h dash is equal to h v by u right shall i substitute that h dash here so what happens because why do why are you doing all these things sir? because you see we have got theta naught h by d when i substitute that theta naught and theta i h should get cancelled so try to express theta i somehow in terms of h not in terms of h dash so let us re try to remove h dash h dash equal to h v by v so we get h now in the equation which get cancelled later theta i is almost equal to what is h dash h v by u into minus 1 by v right 1 by minus v here h dash is h v by u so what you can cancel v and v i can cancel so that is a minus h by u now one more thing u uh, what is u we have placed the object at a very very close to focus point so that images are formed at a very very large distance highly magnified so it is at infinity and the object is at focus so shall i write the object distance as focal length itself but it is minus f so shall i write u is equal to minus f so what will be this one so that implies theta i is equal to minus h divided by minus f because u is equal to minus f when the image is at infinity object is at focus you know it so the distance of the object is on the other side it is minus focal length it is not for the reason that it is convex lens focal length is not uh, not taken negative as it is because convex lens focal length is positive you it is not that reason uh, focal length of a convex lens is no positive but this this distance is treated as focal length which is on this side that distance is negative that is why minus f so what is the uh, uh, theta i plus h by f right so this is actually minus but it becomes it gets cancelled now substitute for magnification magnification for a microscope when the image is at infinity m is equal to theta i by theta naught which is equal to theta i by theta naught theta i we have got it here h by f into theta naught theta naught already we have did ah, it is here h by d h here d here so h h gets cancelled m is equal to d by f right see finally you have the formula if you have not followed the method just try to uh, uh, go back and see the video once again and if you have any doubt you can uh, clarify it to uh, message and you can uh, send a message to again the same number okay because uh, you may, i don't know where you will get trapped i have told whatever i know if you have still more some more doubts you just clarify it but remembering this formula remembering the diagram is important so what are the two differences or what is the difference between the two telescope uh, two microscopes both are simple microscopes one is uh, image formed at uh, uh, least distance of distinct vision near point another is image formed at infinity now finally what is important for theory exam is only diagram and final formula that is more than enough but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't follow the uh, derivation may be useful in solving any problem so m equal to d by f and finally it becomes very easy to remember the formula you see you have 1 plus d by f that and you have m equal to d by f that's all that's all the difference so that that is the second one so magnification in the case of uh, convex lens simple microscope and image at infinity so shall i rub this and uh, uh, write it here only in short i'll write it in short so this is a uh, uh, simple microscope and image is at uh, least distance of distinct vision image is not at a very large distance so magnification is 1 plus d by f okay simple and uh, this is image at infinity okay and uh, magnification is d by f that's all
capital D by F. Magnification is D by F. So, two types of uh, image formation. Now we will move on to the compound microscope. And you know the magnification of simple microscopes in two positions we have finished. In a compound microscope there should be two lenses. Now first of all we will draw the diagram for compound microscope. How will the compound microscope form the image? So shall we draw it? So better you draw it yourself because uh, you shouldn't keep on watching it. Watching these types of diagrams will not uh, teach you. You have to draw it along with me. So hope you are doing uh, uh, so. So now let us uh, write the uh, magnification in the case of compound microscope, magnification in uh, compound microscope. So what is compound microscope? The microscope which uses two lenses and forms the highly magnified image compared to the simple microscope. Yes, magnification in the case of compound microscope. The process remains the same, but here you have two lenses. How the two lenses work? First of all, you have to take a simple lens like this, and it should form an enlarged real image. Objective should form the enlarged real image. That enlarged real image should act like an object for the eyepiece, which is within the focus. Then simple microscope for a procedure. So let me take the focus of objective here, focus, double the focus of objective here and uh, focus of objective here, double the focus of objective here. Keep an object between F0 and F, 2F0, F and 2F. One ray parallel to the principal axis passes through focus and another ray passing through the optic center and after refraction it moves like this and it meets here beyond 2F, so this is the image. I'll write this as the height of the object. This is with respect to um, uh, objective only. So let me write it here. This is objective. So we have to find out the magnification produced by each lens and then we have to multiply it. I will tell you why you have to multiply it. Uh, so this is the H dash for uh, objective. Okay. Now, now we have to keep this eyepiece here. Eyepiece must be kept in such a way that this image lies right within its focus because a virtual erect enlarged image is always formed when the object is within the focus. For this lens this is object now and its uh, focus will be here. This is the focus of eyepiece and this is the focal length of objective and this is the sorry eyepiece and this is the focal length of the objective here right and uh, okay, the distance between, the, here is a gap between the two four sides, right? This focus, this focus, of course, 2F is not needed now. Uh, let us uh, reduce the confusion by drawing, so, uh, writing so many terms here. Now, this distance is called tube length in a microscope. Let me take this as tube length. That is called tube length. The distance from the focus of the objective to the focus of eyepiece, which is very close to the image formed by the objective. This lies just within the uh, focus. So, if you take it like this, then, of course, these two rays will diverge. Of course, I have to, what I have to do is, when you draw the ray diagram, uh, you should know everything about it. We know that the image should be formed somewhere here. It should be formed, okay, er, anywhere in uh, here. Suppose it is formed here, then uh, you just uh, draw these diagrams after you combine this and this one. Okay, now in this direction you project it, because once you project it, if, you, if they don't meet that, then it will be a problem. Okay, ray diagram means it should be a straight line, it looks like, yeah, it is like this. These two rays, they uh, diverge after passing through the eyepiece in such a way that they appear to come from this point, this point. So the image, final image is formed. Yes, this is uh, the final image position and it is virtual, enlarged, uh, erect, erect, what do you mean by erect image? Compared to this uh, condition, this is erect because this is the object for the eyepiece. So final image is formed here and uh, put, did we put all the arrows? No, no arrow here, no arrow, otherwise I would have lost some one or two marks, so you should be careful while putting the arrow marks. 
Okay, now what is magnification? Now the total magnification is magnification of objective into magnification of eyepiece. Why is that? Say this, uh, this image, uh, sorry, object is having a height of 1 centimeter. This, the magnification produced by the object is say some three, three times. What do you mean by three times magnification? Then this image is three times the uh, Im image here is three times the size of the object. That means if object height is one centimeter, this should be three centimeters. Magnified three times. Now that serves as an object for this lens and it forms a virtually erect enlarged image here because the object is lying, lying just within the focus. If it is not within the focus, you can adjust it. Uh, you have rack and pinion arrangement. Okay. Now this is three centimeters. Say this is producing a magnification of five. Five times magnified. What do you mean by that? If the object is three centimeters in height, then you will get a 15 centimeter magni uh, height uh, image, magnified image. What is the total magnification? One centimeter object, because of objective and objective, total has produced a 15 centimeter image, 15 times, which is nothing but three into five. Very simple. So you have to multiply. Now, what is the magnification of objective and what is the magnification of uh, eyepiece? So in order to find it out, you can do it like this. Magnif ah, I will take some angles here now. I will take this angle as beta. Can you see that? Right? That angle as beta. Because if I want to find out the magnification, I have to find out h dash by h. So if I want to get h dash and h, you see in which triangle you get h dash and h. One is here. And in which uh, one side is almost tube length, another side is h dash. What about here in this triangle? In this triangle, of course, I will rub the arrow mark and I will put the arrow mark somewhere here uh, so that I don't lose any mark. And this is beta. I'll take that angle as beta. Sir, if you have marked beta, okay, adjacent side is F0. What about opposite side? It is nothing but the same one because this is a parallel ray. This is H. So, shall I take this as H? opposite side by adjacent side. So here you get h, here you get h dash and this is definitely beta. Why? It is vertically opposite angle because this ray once it passes through the focus doesn't deviate, it passes in the same uh, direction. That means uh, it doesn't bend. So these two are straight lines, these are vertically opposite angles. Now take tan beta from this triangle. What is tan beta? Tan beta is equal to opposite side which is nothing but h by adjacent side which is not nothing but focus of objective now remember i am finding out the magnification of objective only not the magnification of eyepiece i, I haven't moved up to eyepiece okay this tan beta is also equal to from this triangle from this triangle opposite side by adjacent side which is nothing but tube length l we call it as tube length the distance from the focus of eyepiece Objective to the uh, focus of eyepiece. Now, what is h dash by h? That is what, what do you call magnification. I can write uh, h dash here only, and I'll bring this h here. h dash by h is equal to L by F naught. L here, h here, and uh, h dash here only. This is the magnification of objective only. Am I right? L by F naught. Okay, and. Say, imagine this uh, image is not at infinity, it is at least distance of distinct vision. You know that in a simple microscope, of course, this plays the role of a simple microscope. Am I, am I right? This plays the role of simple microscope. Its focal length is Fe. So, what is the magnification for this eyepiece? Magnification of eyepiece is 1 plus d by Fe because image is not at infinity. Image is at some uh, certain distance, that is uh, um, least distance of distinct vision. M e is 1 plus d by f e. So what is the total magnification? Total magnification is equal to magnification of objective. How, how much a magnified image is produced by the objective? That is h dash by h for objective. That is n by f naught into magnification of eyepiece. That is already derived in the first case. When the object is at near point, what is the magnification of a lens? 1 plus d by f e. So finally, the simple microscope role is played by eyepiece. So here you have to write the focal length of the eyepiece, 1 plus d by f. This is the magnification produced by a compound microscope. L by f naught into 1 plus d by f. Only two steps. At least at the end you must know this. Diagram, no agreement then. Sir, shall we leave the diagram? 
Is it so important? Yes, this is important. Formula and uh, diagram, at least at the last case. So this is how we find out that magnification in the case of a compound microscope. One thing is left now, that is the telescope. Sir, what is the magnification in a telescope? We are using refracting telescope using convex lenses. We will draw the ray diagram and we will find out the uh, magnification. Shall I rub this one? That is the last one in this chapter. And uh, we will have to work out some problems regarding this also, combination of lenses. Then we will uh, move on to the next chapter. But we will finish it now. Telescope, magnification. So telescope is an object, uh, sorry, device used to view distant objects. It also contains objective and uh, eyepiece. Shall I draw the diagram here? So this is an objective. This is the principal axis. And... Uh, Distant rays, uh, ob rays from the distant object are coming from a, uh, for a telescope because we always focus the telescope to a very distant object. Parallel rays will be coming to the objective and I will draw those parallel rays like this. One, two and three like this. So what the objective will do, it will pass those parallel rays and focus them at a particular point and that point is called focus. So these rays move like this and meet at focus like this now will they stop there no they will proceed and they proceed like this this proceeds like this it doesn't bend and this one like this now this is the focal length of objective here they will move forward now we have to keep the eyepiece here such a way that again this lies and the point where, from where they are diverging, it, that point lies, uh, acts like the focus of eyepiece also. This is eyepiece. So the lens, eyepiece lens is placed in such a way that that point from which these rays are diverging, that acts like the focus for this one also. Now total tube length is F0 plus Fe. That you can follow it. Now where, how is the image formed? If parallel rays are incident on a convex lens, they meet at focus. If the rays start from the focus, they become parallel, like this. They become parallel of, I, we must have uh, drawn a correct diagram now. Okay, shall I rub this one? And uh, I will bend it a little bit, I will redraw this one. Because for the derivation, I need some space here. Yes, this is eyepiece. And uh, this is the principal axis. Of course, this is the focal length of eyepiece. Uh, yes, this one ray moving like this. This one becoming parallel. This one becoming parallel. And these rays appear to come from again infinity. But this image formed by these parallel rays will be far better than the image formed by uh, these rays when seen directly. Okay? Now, uh, so here is the eye, eye position. I hope you can see the, all the diagram and it is visible. Right. Now, you consider this ray. Here arrow missing, missing, missing. Okay. This one like this. Right. Now, I will take some angles here. Uh, which angle I will consider because I want to find out the magnification here. Again, the magnification total is equal to magnification of objective, magnification of eyepiece. How much uh, objective will magnify the um, uh, uh, image and how much that image is magnified again by the eyepiece. So objective and um, eyepiece magnification product is the total magnification. And if I want to know it, I have to draw a diagram again. Here, you see image is formed at infinity. How is the definition when the, for the magnification when, you, when the image is formed at infinity? Magnification definition is the ratio of the angle created by the image at the uh, eye to the angle created by the object at the eye. That is what you have to go for. When the image is at infinity, you can't expect an image which is larger than the size of the object itself. That is not possible. You can't have an image greater than the size of the moon. That is impossible. So you should have an image which will be better than the image which is seen through your naked eyes. 
when seen through the telescope. You should have a better image. So ratio of the uh, angle created at the eye by the image to the angle created at the eye by the object. So if you directly come in front of the telescope and look into the object from here, now is this the angle created by the eye, uh, by object at the eye, so shall I take it as theta not? Right? Shall I take it as theta not? Yes. If I take it as theta not, and I simply take it as x or h, I'll take this as x. Okay? Then if this ray is almost parallel to the principal axis, if I take it like this, then this is also x. Am I right? This position is also x. So I can take this as x. Is it okay? You can follow it. If I take uh, this ray almost becoming parallel to the principal axis and getting focus, then this will be the focus of eyepiece again. Am I right? If I take this ray parallel to the principal axis almost and getting refracted, then this will be the focus also for the eyepiece. If this is the focus for eyepiece, if this ray is parallel, I can write this as focal length of the eyepiece. And when you look into these rays and they form the angle here, so shall I write this and this angle as angle created by the image at your eyes and theta i. This is theta naught. Shall I go for the vertically opposite angle, theta naught? Am I right? I will remove that arrow mark from here, which is disturbing me. Yes, this is theta naught. So if you directly come in front of the telescope, look into the object, how much angle they create with respect to the principal axis of the uh, whole setup. That is theta naught. Angle created by the object at the eye. Okay. So this is theta naught, this is theta naught. I'll take this as x because I want a triangle for this one. Because this side, adjacent side is uh, focal length. Here also, this is x. So if this ray is almost parallel, take it up to this, then this is x. Shall I write this also as x? And of course, this after refraction passes the focus. Here also it is f e. So what is tan theta naught, which is almost equal to theta naught is equal to, tan theta naught is opposite side by uh, adjacent side, x by f naught equation 1 what is a tan theta i angle created at the i by the image at the i so shall i take it as theta i here when it is tan theta i opposite side x divided by adjacent side focal length of the eyepiece x by f e it is 2 now what is magnification magnification is equal to Theta i by theta naught, theta i by x by f e and into theta naught, theta naught uh, is f naught by x, uh, x by f naught here like this, so f naught by f e. So implies magnification is focal length of the objective by focal length of the eyepiece. Very simple one. Magnification has no unit, no unit. Even in all the formulas, they don't have any unit. Length by length gets cancelled. The unit wise it gets cancelled. So magnification is this formula. So very simple one, but you have to consider one ray if you want to understand it. This ray is uh, missing in your textbook and they have not mentioned it. They have given it only within this ray. But if you write this ray, you will try to understand mathematically the uh, equations written and you will have a link with the diagram. So that's why I have taken this extra ray, which is uh, getting almost parallel to this uh, principal axis, again getting through the focus. Now you can see how much angle they create the angle created by the image forming ray and object ray. This is theta naught, this is theta i, so you can get it. Again, final formula and diagram, very, very important. And you may get one simple question here saying, how can you increase the magnification of a telescope? Very simple. Take an eyepiece of very, very small um, focal length, right? If your fee is very, very small, magnification will be very large. Of course, you can take uh, an objective of a larger focal length also, but we want to have a telescope as small as possible. So magnification of a telescope is uh, can be increased by uh, decreasing the focal length of the eyepiece. So that's all about the derivation. And we will come along with some problems uh, related to this as well as, which is very rarely asked in the exam, but still you must know it. Uh, not for the sake of examination we are learning. We must uh, know it uh, a little more than what you are going to write in the exam. Uh, knowledge wise or uh, entrance exam wise, we will, it is helpful. So with this we will conclude and next time we will meet with the few problems and all and we will go to the next chapter. So till then, keep trying this, keep studying this one, don't waste the time. 
and because we don't know what will happen in the next uh, uh, term that is after one and a half or one month if you have a class then we won't have enough time for anything so better you study all those things and uh, uh, get ready in advance for the next uh, academic year so keep studying um, um, keep watching all these videos till then all the best thank you for watching